guys, today I'm going to be reading chapter 3 and 4 because 3 is a short chapter. So, let's get straight in. Chapter 3 Bump. The porter wheel of the trolley tom was lying when into the hospital lift. The old misshapen man hummed quietly to himself as he pressed a button on to, for the top floor. Tom hated being alone with him. It wasn't as if he had done anything scary, it's just he looked scary. Boy had never seen anyone so particularly ugly before. Yes, there were teachers at his posh boarding school that were so unfortunate looking they had been given cruel nicknames by the boys. But no one was as scary looking as the porter. There was Miss Rabbit, the Dome of Doom, the Mr. Dead Squirrel on his head, the Hairy Gnome, Miss Goggle Eyes, Dr. Octopus, Mr. Clown Shoes, the Dinosaur, Miss Hooter, and Professor Comover. Now, bing! The, the lift doors closed. The porter smiled at Tom. The boy looked the other way. He couldn't bear to look at the man. He seemed even creepy when he smiled. Those rotten, misshapen teeth looked like they could crunch through your bones. Tom's eyes scanned the man's name badge. Unlike the nurse and doctor he had already met, his badge didn't have a name on it, just the man's job. Porter. As the lift trundled slowly upwards, Tom's world gradually began to take shape. Little by little, he began piecing together as the events that had brought him here. It had been a blazing hot summer's day, and he had been playing cricket on the school pitch. The boy lifted his head slightly and looked down. He was still wearing his cricket whites. I'm not wearing whites. Despite his school priding itself on the way to coming top in cricket and rugby in the country, Tom wasn't good at sports. The school celebrated all its sporting heroes with cups and trophies and medals and special mentions by the headmaster in assembly. A boy who much preferred to hide himself away in the corner of the school library with some dusty old books like Tom could easily feel like a nobody. Tom was miserable at school and would wish and would wish the time away. If only the nights and days would pass quicker, he would have meant to himself. The boy was only twelve, but he longed to leave childhood behind forever. Then he would be a grown up and would not have to go to school anymore. If you go to school you don't learn anything so you can't get a job. School played cricket in the summer and Tom immediately discovered the best part of the game for reluctant sportsmen. Fielding. What was fielding? The boy would always place himself at the very far edge of the pitch. So far out, Tom could indulge his favourite pastime. Daydreaming. So far, oh, so far out that he could daydream the afternoon away. So far out, there was little or no chance of the heavy red leather ball ever coming your way. Well, that was Tom's thinking. This time, he was wrong. Very wrong. As the number of the floors flashed past him in the lift, the last thing Tom remembered flashed past in his mind. A heavy red leather ball flying through the air straight towards him at terrific speed. Thud. Everything went down. Bing! This is your stop, young sir. Top floor. Home in the Lord Front Hospital, Children's Ward, slurred the porter. As the lift doors opened, the trolley was rolled out. The porter pushed Tom down into another long corridor before a pair of tall doors banged open. Bang! The pair were inside the children's ward. Welcome to your new home, said the porter. Chapter 4. We're going to keep going because Chapter 3 was quite short. Chapter 3. The children's ward. Tom raised his swollen head a little to take his first look at what his new home. 
the children's ward of Lord Hunt Hospital. There were four other children in the ward. They were all sitting or lying on their beds. All were silent, and no one paid this new boy much attention. Boredom hung in the still, stuffy air. It was more like an old people home than a children's ward. <laughs> in the nearest bed was a plump looking boy in an old pair of spotty pyjamas that were too small for him. He was flickering through a dog-eared picture, some book of helicopters, and sneakily munching on some chocolates hidden under his bed. The name George was chalked on the blackboard above his head. Not George, Robin, Amber and Sally. Next to him was a short, slight boy with neatly plumed ginger hair. He must have had an aberration in his eyes as they were covered in bandages. So covered in fact that it was impossible to see anything. Just imagine that. Wow. A tall pile of classical music CDs and a CD player sat on his side table. The boy's pyjamas were much smaller than George's, and he wore them neatly with a top button done up. Over his bed, in short, was the name Robin. Across the ward from him was a girl with a bob of black hair and brown glasses. Startlingly, startlingly, she had both her legs and arms in plaster. All four of her limbs were held aloft by a complex series of pulleys and winches. She looked like a puppet on strings. Her blackboard read, Amber. Then, in the far corner of the ward, away from the other children, Tom noticed this was a sorrowful figure. It was a girl. It was hard to tell her age, as it, it looked like her illness had weakened her. A few wispy strands of hair sat on top of her head, and above her head was a chalked name, Sally. Say hello to everyone, young sir, prompted the porter. Tom felt so shy, so he muttered, Hello, as quietly as he could get away with without being told to repeat himself. There was a vague murmur of hellos in return, though Sally remained silent. This must be a bed right here, slurred the boy, slurred the porter, as he wheeled the trolley over. Expertly, the boy was rolled from the trolley to the bed. You comfortable? asked the porter, plumping off a pillow. Tom didn't answer. It wasn't comfortable at all. It's like lying on a concrete slab on a brick for a pillow. And the trolley was more comfortable. It was stupid for Tom to pretend not to hear the porter, as he was standing right next to him. Mum was so close that Tom could smell him. In fact, the way he was sure the whole ward could smell him. The man was rather pongy, like he hadn't washed for quite some time. I had a bath a few hours ago on the pommy. His clothes were tired and worn, his shoes were falling apart, and his work overall was thick with grease and grime. He looked like he might be homeless. This is the worst cricketer, came a voice. The children in the ward tensed and shivered at the sound. Then a tall, thin lady stepped out of her office and at the far end of the room. It was Matron, the senior nurse, who was in charge of the ward. Slowly and surely, she made her way down the row of beds towards Tom, her high heels clunking on the floor. Plunk, plunk, plunk. From a distance, Matron looked like she was beautiful. Her long blonde hair had been sprayed perfectly in place. Her face was shiny with makeup, and her teeth were sparkling white. However, when she got nearer to Tom, the boy raised her smile his face. Her eyes were two large black holes, a window into the darkness within. Matron's perfume was so sickly sweet, it burned the children's throats as she passed by. Ooh. You are meant to catch a cricket ball, not header it, said the lady. Stupid, stupid child. <laughs> no one laughed except her. It certainly didn't sound funny to Tom, whose head was still Robbie with pain. That cricket ball left a very nasty bump, Madam Matron, said the porter. His voice was crackling a little, as if he were nervous or something. I think young sir should have an x-ray first thing in the morning. I don't need your opinion, thank you, snapped Matron. In an instant, her face didn't seem that beautiful after all. 
as it just means it's loud. You are nothing more than a lowly porter, lowest of the low. You don't even know the first thing about caring for patients. So in the future, keep your mouth shut. The porter lowered his head as the other children exchanged nervous looks. It was clear this lady intimidated them all as well. With a flick of her hand, Matron brushed the porter aside and he stumbled a little to steady himself. Let me look at that bump, she said as she peered over the boy. Mm, yes, that's a nasty bump. You should have an extra first thing in the morning. The porter rolled his eyes at Tom, but once again, the boy didn't react. Without even so much as glancing at him, Matron said to the man, Porter, you may go before you sin stink out my ward. The porter sighed before giving a brief smile and nod to the children in the ward. Quickly! shouted the woman, and the man limped off as fast as he could, dragging his withered leg behind him. Tom began longing to be back at school. The children all seemed utterly miserable place to be. That's the end of chapter four. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time for chapter five. Bye!